So in this video, we're going to take a look at insertion sort, which is another algorithm that you can use to sort an array. And in this example, we're going to use an array of integers. An algorithm recall is a step-by-step -step set of instructions for completing a task. The idea with insertion sort is as follows. We're going to build the sorted array in place, shifting elements that were previously considered sorted, if we need to, in order to fit those elements in the right position in the sorted portion of the array. This is fundamentally different than how we've done things with selection sort or bubble sort. Recall with those uh, algorithms, what we do is we usually end up just sorting one element. We have to go through the entire array to put one element in the correct position. For bubble sort, it's usually the largest element that's available. For selection sort, it's usually the smallest element. But we're only getting one at a time. We're not making a, you know, we have to go through this array multiple times. With insertion sort, we only are going to move forward through the array once. We might have to look back at things we've already sorted to sort of shift them around to make room. But we only have to make one forward pass of the entire array. So that's sort of a fundamental difference. And the way we do this is we get started. We just say the first thing we see is sorted. It's the only thing we've seen so far, so it might as well be sorted. Then we just do the following for every element that remains. We look at, the, we look at that element, and we maybe shift things that we previously considered sorted just to make room for it until we get through every single element. Uh, this will probably make a little bit more sense when you see it visually. So let's, uh, let's illustrate that now with this array. And in this array, what I'm going to do is everything that's red is unsorted. Everything that's blue is sorted. So keep that in mind as we go through this uh, example. So recall that the first thing we do is we declare the first element of the array is sorted. So that's five. We just see it. We're like, got it. This one is sorted. Then we're going to, so we have the sorted portion in blue, and we have this five element unsorted portion in red. And now we're going to repeat the following process until everything else is sorted. We look at the next unsorted element, and we maybe shift things around in the blue section in order to put that element in the correct sorted position. So the first element that we see is 2. We take a look. We see, is there anything we need to do to put 2 in the right spot? And the answer is yes. We need to shift 5 over in order to put 2 in front of it. So we slide 5 over, and then we put 2 where 5 basically was in memory. And now 2, 5 is sorted and the red portion is unsorted. Let's just repeat this process again. The next thing we see is a 1. We take a look at the blue portion. What do we have to move? Well, here again, we have to move everything, because 1 comes before both 2 and 5. So both of them slide over, and that leaves one vacancy to put the 1. The next thing we see is 3. What do we have to move this time in order to get everything into position? Well, it's not everything this time. We just have to move the 5 over. So we move the 5 to where the 3 was, and then we put the 3 where the 5 just vacated. The next element that we see is 6. And this is sort of a special case of insertion sort, where it's larger than everything in the sorted portion, which is great, because then we don't have to move anything at all. We just say, all right, well, 6 is in the right spot. We can just declare 6 to be sorted. And then the final element we have here is 4. So we take a look at that. We look back at the blue portion, the sorted portion of the array. We figure out what we need to slide over. It's just the 5 and the 6. They slide over, which makes room for the 4. And now we have sorted our entire six element array using the insertion sort algorithm. Now again, this feels very different than what anything we've seen before. But unfortunately, it's still n squared algorithm. So for example, imagine that the array is in reverse order. So it's 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In that case, we have to shift each of the elements n positions every time we want to make an insertion. So we, we see this 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 array. The 6 is good. Then we see the 5. We have to shift the 6 over. Then we see the 4, we have to shift the 6 and the 5 over. Then we see the 3, we have to shift the 6 and the 5 and the 4. So we just keep getting worse. We have to keep making all these shifts, and each one of those costs us. So even though this looks and feels very different than a bubble sort or a selection sort, this is still n squared, unfortunately. In the best case scenario, though, the array is perfectly sorted. And this is sort of that example we saw a second ago with the 5 and the 6, where we just said, oh, well, that's kind of convenient. The 6 is greater than everything in the sorted portion, so we just kind of move the line over. We just changed it from red to blue without changing anything. Uh, in the best case scenario, we just do that for every element. One, two, three, four. We just keep changing them red to blue, no shifts. And so if we think about this in uh, asymptotic notation, that means that uh, this algorithm is a big O of n squared, but is still omega of n. I'm Doug Lloyd. This is CS50.